This is patently outrageous. This is an act of war committed against our country, and I think the judge blew it here. I gotta tell you, it sounds like a lot of legal mumbo jumbo. Smirkanish. Michael Smirkanish. Smirkanish. What about this? Did, Neil, I, did he have a lawyer or did he not? Oh, come on. Listen, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired already of people trying to evoke sympathy for a, a, a kid who's a terrorist. And my question is, why isn't he in an 8 by 8 cell down in Guantanamo Bay with everybody else from Al-Qaeda? I mean, cut me some slack here. And you know what's going to happen next, Neil? But before, before it's over, although I don't know how they're going to pull it off with the parents in the picture, you'll be hearing that he was abused as a child and there was a divorce in the picture and all that other mumbo jumbo. Forget about it. He twice consented by waiving in writing and orally his Miranda rights. He then acknowledged that he was fighting alongside of terrorists since May of last year, that he met bin Laden, that he carried a rifle, and here's the worst, that 90 days before 9-1-1, he knew that there were suicide attacks planned against the United States. Well, what the hell did he do about it to protect his parents? That's the question that I want to know about this. Well, you know that the... Uh the defense. Next, how did you feel about his decision just from a, a legal point of view? Well, I had two reactions. First of all, the decision by Judge Yan, which is 300 pages long, and I read last night, is an absolute repudiation of all the misinformation that the Jamal forces and the Ed Asners and the Whoopi Goldbergs and Mike Farrells have been uh, promulgating on the court for the last literally 20 years. In other words, he discounted absolutely everything they had to say about the underlying facts of the case. The information that the Jamal Forces and the Ed Asners and the Whoopi Goldbergs and Mike Farrells have been uh, promulgating on the court for the last literally 20 years. In other words, he discounted absolutely everything they had to say about the underlying facts of the case. The conviction of Mumia Abu Jamal stands. What happened here? I mean, the Philadelphia police have always had a reputation of being tough guys, and uh, now the, the criticism is they didn't act fast enough. Well, you know, the, the police are damned if they do, and they're damned if they don't. If, if they had taken action, then no doubt there'd be somebody here sitting on your program today saying, aha, police brutality, and yet again from Philadelphia. And they don't do anything, and so we say they were too timid. What happened in Philadelphia the other night was a combination of too many people, too much booze, not enough cops, and police who were, I think, overly restrained. Michael Smirconish. Lou, I'm, I'm bothered by uh, the notion. I, I happen to agree with some of what that caller says. Uh, I'm bothered by the notion that Tom Ridge was cut out of the process because, and, and, and you know, it's almost ridiculous to, to simply that ruled him out because of his feelings on one particular issue. And that gets back to what I said a few moments ago, that I think it's a mistake for the party to be driven by the ideologues. And I, I say that as someone who is decidedly right of center himself. This is political correctness run amok. I mean, this is, this is so ridiculous, uh, Carol, I, I can't tell you. If they wanted to create a monument without the photograph as a basis, then, then fine. To quote Jim Watt, you can give me a black two Jews and a cripple and the thing will make perfect sense. But for crying out loud, you don't take a real-life photograph 